You'll want to end up with a piece of fabric like this to fold over your pin in order to make your metal. And I will show you how to make a template here, but I'll also link to some templates on my blog in the video description. So we have our pin here for reference and you're going to want to include seam allowances. I'm just going to eyeball that and include about a quarter of an inch here. And on this side, we'll also want to include our seam allowance. So I want the metal edge to be here and our seam allowance should be about this big. So I'll be able to cut this part off. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off right now. You'll need some space at the top to fold over your pin shank here. So the visible part of the metal will begin about right here. And then you can draw the bottom however you want. You can also fold your piece lengthwise and then cut to make sure this part's symmetrical. So I've drawn that and then again include some space for the seam allowance. And then you can cut your template. So in the end, the visible part of the metal will be this area inside the lines. So you can use this to cut out one piece for the front and one piece for the back lining. So I've got this scrap fabric, which works well for this project. And I think I'm going to use this for the front, maybe add a bit of lace scrap, and this will be my back piece. So now that you have these two identical pieces, you can put them together with the right sides or the sides that you want to be out facing. So I would like this to show on the back and I'm gonna place this on the front because each side is the same basically. And then you can pin around this and stitch either with a sewing machine or with a hand stitch and leave the top part open. Do not stitch across this part. So I have threaded my needle. And for this particular piece, I'm actually just going to use a somewhat larger uh, basting stitch or running stitch around the edge. Then I'm going to turn it right side out and whip stitch around the edges. So I've got my thread anchored and I'm just going to make some rather large stitches um, across the edges. Be sure to keep your tension even too if you're hand sewing this especially so that your stitches aren't too loose or so tight that they create a pucker. Now that I have sewn all around these edges and I have this end still open, I'm going to go ahead first and clip these ends here so that there's not extra bulk in this corner. So careful to not cut into my actual stitching I'm just trimming the excess here. I'm also going to cut up to this point here so that there's no puckering around this area when I turn it. Again, careful to not cut into the thread or stitches. I'm also, as I turn this, leaving my thread attached because I'm going to use this thread to then whip stitch around the edges. But first, I'm going to tie a knot here so that the thread does not slip around. And when you're ready to push these corners out, you can take something like a knitting needle and do that carefully. As you can see, I have some extra large holes since I was using that larger running stitch, but I'm going to take care of that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
So now using my fingers to just press this edge as I sew, I'm going to stitch a tiny whip stitch along the edge of this piece. You don't have to stitch around the edge if you use a smaller stitch or a sewing machine to sew that first seam. You can simply press this with an iron, but I kind of like the way the stitching looks around the edges. So as I approach this corner here, I'm going to push it out a little more. And I also need to make sure this part that's open here stay shut as I stitch so I'm going to be very careful as I go around this corner and again as I near this inner corner I'm going to want to make sure all the edges are where they're supposed to be so this little raw edge has come out and I need to push him back in and then I will carefully stitch around so here is the finished banner part or ribbon part if you will of my metal so now i have my thread attached at the top and i'm going to at this point take my pin and attach this so here's my safety pin i'm going to open it up just so i know for sure which is the bottom part of course you could slide this off and rearrange if you needed to but i've decided this will be the back so i'm going to put it over here. I'm also going to move my thread so that it's back here. Slide that through so it should look like this and just fold this over. And then just holding this down with my fingers and holding the raw edge under there, I'm going to stitch again along this edge. And I am being careful to not go through to the front, but if you did, that wouldn't be a big deal. Sometimes I do that intentionally, so it's really up to you. So then I've reached this edge and I'm just going to put a few stitches in this spot to keep the end down and tidy-ish. <laughs> And then at this point, you can begin decorating. As you can see, I actually did go through here, but that again, that's fine. And I think adds a lot of character. So I'm going to keep this yarn attached and I think I'm going to find my piece of lace that I had earlier and sew that on. This is of course a really easy going project. You can arrange your pieces any way you want and it looks pretty good almost no matter what you do. I'm just going to lay that there and I'm going to come through the back with my needle and right now I think I'm just going to straight stitch across there going through all layers of the fabric and the lace and I'm going to tie this off because I'm about out of thread and I will attach some more to stitch on a few other embellishments. So I have a lot of beads and embellishments and scraps of fabric, but these are some that I thought particularly went well with this color. Well, this is a tiny scrap of fabric that I just love. This is just a quartz crystal I have, some freshwater pearls, and this chain of rhinestone and just like some loose sequins and things. So I'm going to see how I want to arrange these, but essentially you're just at this point deciding on how you want things to look. You can lay them out, get an idea, and then just use simple stitches to sew them on. And again, it doesn't matter too much if you're very tidy. It's okay if you're not show, I think, because again, it adds to the rustic charm of this type of project. To sew on the rest of these things, I'm going to use this color of embroidery floss. And I've cut off um, maybe about 20 inches or so. And I'm going to divide it in half so that there are three strands to each side. 
Now that I've separated that, I'm going to thread my needle and tie a knot in the other end and then I can sew my items on. So I think I'm going to start by sewing on this bit of fabric. I'm going to cut off a square and then I do think I'm actually going to turn these other edges in so that those are a little cleaner, but again, leave this frayed part. And the other thing to note is that some of your objects, like this particular bead, uh, might have a smaller hole. So in that case, you'll have to switch your needle and with something a little more substantial like this embroidery floss, you may have to thread a smaller needle with a needle threader. However, if you do not have a needle threader, uh, there is another trick you can use and I will show you that right now. So if you don't have a needle threader, you can take a small piece of thread that will fit through your smaller needle and you'll need to thread the two ends through your smaller needle and be sure to hold them so that you've got this loop at the back end and then take the bulkier thread that you want to thread in your smaller eye put it in the loop of the smaller thread and then carefully pull that through and it essentially works as a needle threader now, depending on the size of your needle's eye and the bulk of the thread, of course, this doesn't always work. Sometimes thread is just too large to pass through. But in this case, it's really just a matter of getting all those little frayed edges in through the small eye and sometimes even trimming or wetting it doesn't help. So using another piece of thread can. And now I should be able to attach my bead with the very small hole and I will probably pass back through the front again and just go back and forth a couple times through this just for extra security. I'm going to with the same thread come out the front and I'm going to attach one end of my rhinestone chain here and I'm just going to do that by sewing across the narrow part here so that it can't slip through the loop and I'll do it on the other side. You can continue adding embellishments in this way until you're happy with your piece. This is a very forgiving project and a lot of fun and a great way to use scraps and odd pieces and found objects. So I hope you'll give it a try soon and share the results with me. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it or found it useful. And I will talk with you later.